What's up, Highway 83 YouTubers? It's Tony and Tommy out in the Highway 83 shop tonight. We're going to be talking about running a compression check on your engine. Got a lot of questions on that lately, so I'm going to do a quick walkthrough on how to how to test your engine to check the compression, and that'll give you a good diagnosis of how healthy your engine is. It's very simple to do, and we're taking this one apart anyway, so right now is the time to do it. Um, what you're going to want to do is get your engine nice and warm, start it up, run it for a few minutes, get it to operating temperature. That's how you're going to get your most accurate readings. And uh, from there, you're going to want to disconnect the fuel and the spark. So for the spark, we're just going to disconnect your distributor plug. For the fuel, I got the, the fuse to the fuel pump unplugged from the fuse, fuse box underneath the dash. So that's, we're not getting any fuel, we're not getting any spark. You're safe there. Um, we got the battery still hooked up. I got charger on this one because the battery's not very good because uh, we need to, to crank the engine over and build up the pressure in each cylinder. So from there, like you've seen in my other video, I have the spark plug boots labeled one, two, three, four because you don't want to get these mixed up. So I've got these all labeled, and next thing you're going to do is pull pull all four plugs, or plug wires, and then the spark plugs. So we're going to start, start with that. We're going to get all four, all four wires out, and they're, they're labeled so we know where they're going to go when they come back. Next we got our spark plug wrench socket wrench in the 16 valve engine they are buried down deep into the cylinder head so I've got a longer longer extension this one's got a magnet in it so it's real nice it pulls the plugs out very easily and you don't got to worry about them getting stuck in there so we're getting uh, all four plugs are going to be pulled out to do your compression check and get accurate readings. If you don't do that, it's gonna, it's gonna give you false readings. So there's one of our plugs. Now we're gonna pull two, three, and four, get them all out, and uh, we'll jump on to the next step. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the piece de la resistance that you're gonna need to do the job. This is the compression tester. Pick this up at your local AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any parts store. Very, very easy to get. It's got a, a couple different thread sizes. You're going to have to make sure you have the right thread size for your Suzuki engine. Um, what you're going to want to do sometimes this this is a compression fitting. Sometimes it's easier to have the the gauge off, but your your plug is out, and you're just going to want to. Stick the hose in there and screw her, screw her down and tight. Just hand tight, that's all you gotta do, nothing crazy. It's got that rubber O-ring so it's gonna seat. Now you got, click your gauge in there and now you're, you're set to do it. Now what you're gonna wanna do is uh, you gotta have the throttle in the wide open position to run your test. So you're either gonna have to have somebody inside the vehicle with their foot on the, on the throttle or pin, pin the throttle linkage open or else you're, you're not gonna get appropriate readings as well. So, so again, you got your all four plugs out, distributor disconnected, uh, fuel pump is cut off and wide open throttle. Gauge is installed, you are ready to go. Now we are going on to our next step. Okay, now we are gonna crank over the vehicle and read our pressure reading on the gauge. You're gonna crank the engine over for roughly five seconds or a little bit more until you stop building pressure on the gauge. So here's our first reading. Okay, so as you can see, we're a little over 180 roughly 185 on this cylinder. So now you can release your pressure and we're gonna keep going back to 
or go forward, excuse me, to, to cylinder two, three, and four. You're gonna run all four numbers, and then you're gonna wanna write them down. I normally write them down right on the cylinder head or in your notebook, and then, we're, then you can analyze the numbers from there. Again, you want the engine hot to get your most accurate reading. If you cannot get the engine hot, because you can't get it started or what have you, you can do it cold, which still is better than nothing. You'll be able to tell the difference between, between the cylinders. Ideally, what you wanna be having is all four cylinders as close to the same pressure as possible. If you have, like our number there was 185, so if you got 180, 185, 190, something like that, that's, that's fairly good. Um, pressures, but if you have one cylinder that's one, you know, 185 here, and then the next cylinder is at 120, then you know you got you got issues. You want to keep within roughly 10% pressure on each cylinder. So if you are above or 10% of your highest pressure, so if you are below, if one number is drastically different, you know you got a problem. So if, if one number is really low, you could have a valve, a bad valve, you could have a bad head gasket, and you could have various issues, but uh, the main thing is to get all four pressure readings and then you can analyze it from there. So that's a very easy way, especially if you're parting out a vehicle, you wanna test the engine, you're gonna sell it to somebody, you wanna have some sort of uh, some numbers something to make the buyer you know know what you got you're not just telling them hey I got some engine here this way they know they know what they're gonna be getting and uh, you can go from there there's also other tests like a leak down test you can do on the engine but today we're just covering this we'll get into other other stuff later on so I am hopeful that this helped you out um, as always you guys suggest a lot of uh, other ideas for me to make videos on. I appreciate that and keep keep the ideas coming. I, I'm always looking for new ideas. Um, you're, you're, you guys are what keeps it going over at 83. You know, order them parts, tell me what to do. I suggest these seeds, Taco Bell seeds. I suggest Miller High Life. Combination gets the job done. I suggest working with a cat. A good cat is hard to find. He keeps the place clean of rats when you're spitting your seeds out. So until until later on, it's Tony over at 83 doing what he does best. You know what I mean? Spitting seeds, drinking beer. I'll talk to you guys later. Aye, aye.